Welcome everybody. This is called the Simpson's method. It's given by the following formula. Integral a to b f of x dx. You should always place this approximation sign followed by delta x over 3 times f of x0 plus 4 times f of x1 plus 2 times f of x2 plus 4 times f of x3 plus etc plus 2 times f of x suffix n minus 2 plus 4 times f of x suffix n minus 1 plus the last quantity f of x suffix n. Now this is the most powerful numerical integration technique called as the Simpson's rule. This has got other variations also but we will use this. In this case delta x has a formula which is written as b negative a divided by n where n is the number of divisions of this interval b negative a. Okay, so that completes this particular Simpson's rule. Now, as far as the formula is concerned, now what we are going to do is uh, I would be applying this Simpson's rule to integrate negative 2 to 2 e raised to the power of negative x squared over 2 times dx. I will take n is equal to 4. So delta x is equal to b negative a this is divided by 4 n is equal to 4 here. So this is going to be 2 added with 2 divided by 4 which is equal to 1. So we increment in terms of 1 right every time we start. So if we had to start with x is equal to negative 2 which is the lowest interval the next quantity for x is going to be negative 1. The next one is going to be 0 followed by x is equal to 1 and then x is equal to 2. So you have one interval here 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we talk about this interval, this division. Okay, so I have that in mind. Now what I wish to do is I would have to find out the functional value at each of these points. So I need to get f of the first value, negative 2. What is that? So that's going to be e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by 2 that is going to be negative 2 whole squared divided by 2 which is equal to e raised to the power of negative 4 divided by 2 which is equal to e raised to the power of negative 2. Now what is e raised to the power of negative 2? Let me find that out. e raised to the power of negative 2 has a value of 0 0.1353. Okay, the next is f of negative 1 e raised to the power of negative of negative 1 squared divided by 2 which is e raised to the power of negative 0 0.5 which is equal to so okay set this up okay this should be shift and uh, e raised to the power of negative 0 0.5 what is that that's uh, 0 0.6065 Next is f of 0, which is e raised to the power of negative 0 squared divided by 2, which is e raised to the power of negative 0, which will give you 1. And next is f of 1, which is e raised to the power of negative 1 over 2. That is going to be e raised to the power of negative 0 0.5, which is equal to the same value, 0 0.6065. And next is f of 2, f of 2 is e raised to the power of negative. 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 which is e raised to the power of negative 2 which is going to be 0 0.1353 so these are the values I will have to utilize okay so let me go and substitute these values in the in the formula again so delta x is 1 substitute here so integral negative 2 to 2 e raised to the power of negative x squared over 2 times dx is equal to is approximately equal to my delta x is 1 divided by 1 third f of x naught f of x naught is the first entry okay this is the first entry so f of uh, that's f of negative 2 is 0 0.1353 Five three plus. Now you can simply multiply by. Say you start by two. If you are multiplying by two, you have to put in all the even entries, right? If you are starting with two, you place in all the even quantities. So clearly, if you were to see here, all the even quantities are placed with the coefficient of two. 
this is 2, this is 2. So, in this interval, you watch here, we have divided negative 2 to 2 in the following way. We started with negative 2, then negative 1, then uh, I have a 0, then I have a 1 and a 2. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 intervals are there. So, the first and the last value will go here. The first and last value will go here and will go here. In between, so, uh, this is f of x0 and f of x1, f of x2, f of x3 and f of x4. So, in this case, this will be the f first entry, this will be the last entry. Okay, so these two will be odd entries and this will be the even, 2 times x, f of x2. So, 2 times f of x2, which entry will be f of x2? So, this one is going to be f of x2. Okay, so f of x2 is going to be 0, so that's going to be 2 times of 1. So, substitute 2 times of 1 plus 4 times of the other entry, this entry, right, f of minus 1, this entry, and the this entry. These two are going to be odd entries. So, 4 times of 0 0.6065 plus 0 0.6065 0 0.6065 plus the last entry 0 0.1353 okay so this is approximately 1 over 3 just to add these entries so what have you got 0 0.1353 with 0 0.1353 0 0.1353 so that is going to give me 0 0.2706 plus 2 plus 0 0.6065 so this is going to give me 4.852 and anything else okay everything is fine so if to this you add a 2 and then you add 0 0.27 Zero six, you get this seven point one two two six divided by three divided by three. What do you get here? Approximately two point three seven four two. Now, this is a very close value to the right to the absolute solution. Now, you can increase this accuracy by increasing the number of division by increasing n initially i divided the total number the entire stretch by 4 but you can increase it to 6 and 10 the more you increase the more accurate the result will be now if you were to check it with the two other solutions which i've got let me show that to you this was the gauss quadrature two point formula so that produced a result of 2.0572 and let me show you the other one Okay, this is the three point result. This produced Gauss quadrature 3.2.4472. Now, this is producing 2.3742. Now, comparing to this and this, this is even closer to the accurate value. So, in today's class, I have dealt with the three numerical techniques. One is a Gauss quadrature two point, the other is a Gauss quadrature three point, and then I have I explain to you how to utilize the Simpsons one-third rule. Thank you everybody. Until we meet again, please like, share and subscribe.